The Air Force's sixth-generation fighter jet has been on the news many times, but no one talks about the Navy's fighter jet project, which may even turn out better than NGAD. The Navy even recently submitted a budget requesting $9 billion in funding for this new jet in 2024. This vast amount shocked many people, and the Navy's fighter jet program is beginning to pique our interest. What terrific machine are they planning to build with such a budget? There is a lot to discover about this naval project shrouded in secrecy, but rumors have been flying about what it will be used for and why it's being developed. Amid all these rumors, we've picked out facts, and we'll be sharing these with you as we proceed. Join us as we explore the realities of the U.S. testing the $9 billion fighter jet of the sixth generation. The Air Force's secretive 6th generation NGAD stealth fighter took flight much earlier than expected, but there's something else in the works, and it's equally as powerful and even more expensive. The Navy's FAXX Strike Fighter, part of the Next Generation Air Dominance Program, shares a name and some subsystems with the Air Force's effort to develop a new air superiority fighter. However, these programs vastly diverge, with each branch developing its own advanced aircraft to meet its unique needs. Range is a top priority for the Navy, along with speed and weapon-carrying capacity. These priorities were highlighted in the Navy's Aviation Vision 2030 to 2035 document released in October 2021, emphasizing the need for longer range, greater speed, passive sensor technology, and the capability to employ longer range weapons. Before we dive into the significance of these needs, let's explore what the NGAD has in store. Secretary of the Air Force Frank Kendall has highlighted the significance of the NGAD platform within the air dominance system. He emphasized that this cutting-edge technology represents a significant advancement over the F-22, which it will eventually replace. NGAD is designed to possess enhanced lethality and the ability to operate effectively in highly contested environments, ensuring its survival, adaptability, and interoperability in the air domain. Most of the details of the NGAD solicitation to the industry are classified. Still, it's essential to understand what distinguishes one fighter generation from another, especially when labeling NGAD as a sixth-generation fighter. Caitlin Lee, a senior fellow at the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies, underscores that describing NGAD as a sixth-generation fighter signifies a significant advancement in capability, crucial for addressing evolving threats in the modern era. It was on July 1st that Lockheed Martin celebrated the 80th anniversary of its renowned Skunk Works division on its official Instagram account. They posted images showcasing legendary aircraft developed by Skunk Works over the years, like the U-2 spy plane, SR-71 Blackbird, F-117 Nighthawk, and F-22 Raptor. But the final image wasn't like any jet they've released before. Since rumors about it have existed before, many believed this intriguing and futuristic drawing might be a sneak peek at the sixth-generation aircraft currently in development as part of the NGAD program. NGAD is the U.S.'s sixth-generation program. Its mission is to create a next-gen family of systems that will secure air superiority for U.S. forces, even in the most challenging operational environments. This family includes new sensors, weapons, unmanned aerial vehicles, and other cutting-edge technologies. Let's check out its capabilities. Stealth is a game-changer that emerged just one generation ago, and it's here to stay. According to the Air Force's biennial acquisition report covering fiscal years 2019 and 2020, stealth technology is a cornerstone of this new fighter's capabilities. The NGAD fighter has pushed the boundaries of stealth technology with its unique triangular shape, internal payload storage, and the absence of traditional tail sections, also known as vertical stabilizers. This groundbreaking design sets it apart as the first fighter in history to unveil such a revolutionary approach. Historically, vertical stabilizers were essential to keep an aircraft airborne until the $2 billion B-2 Spirit introduced the concept of active flow control. Learning from decades of aviation history, the United States understands there's always room for improvement, no matter how advanced an aircraft may seem. This is particularly crucial as near-peer adversaries are constantly evolving. 
Hence, the NGAD fighter adopts an open architecture that facilitates swift and easy upgrades. This adaptability ensures the fighter remains competitive and can swiftly address new battlefield challenges posed by advancing enemy forces. The sixth-generation NGAD fighter can evolve into a seventh-generation fighter years after its initial deployment. The NGAD fighter has advanced sensors and weapons to gather and act upon relevant information about its surroundings swiftly. Expect it to wield the most advanced sensors and weapons developed in the United States. These sensors offer maximum connectivity, partly because the Air Force has moved away from traditional radar systems mounted on the aircraft's exterior, opting instead for electronically configured smart skins integrated into the fuselage. This ensures that information collected by the fighter's sensors can be shared in real time with other friendly aircraft, regardless of their generation. Regarding weaponry, the NGAD fighter is poised to carry a diverse arsenal of advanced American guns, bombs, missiles, and laser-directed energy weapons. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall III has also announced that each NGAD fighter will be accompanied by two loyal wingman drones, ready to perform missions as directed by the manned fighter. While these capabilities are undeniably impressive, a crucial factor needs to be addressed – cost. The NGAD fighter comes with a hefty price tag, estimated at around $300 million per unit, and the Air Force plans to acquire 200 of them. However, despite the substantial numbers, there are compelling reasons why the NGAD fighter represents a worthwhile investment for the Air Force. One key factor is that a single NGAD fighter can effectively replace multiple legacy fighters. We saw this when the jet took a full-scale demonstrator in September 2020. Interestingly, the Navy's variant of the sixth-generation fighter's development might also be in just a few years. We don't have access to detailed plans and technology specifics about the FAXX for security reasons, but conceptual work on this fighter has been ongoing for quite some time. In fact, the Navy's 2024 budget request is seeking as much as $9 billion in funding for the new jet, a demand that has shocked many and made us curious about the jet's capabilities. This funding request is spread out over the next five years, but an article in The Drive has raised the possibility that this allocation might indicate the imminent arrival of prototypes or demonstrators for the FAXX. It's not surprising that the Navy is looking to accelerate the development of its FAXX variant, considering how the Air Force has made significant strides in speeding up the design, development, and production of weapons platforms through digital engineering. Nowadays, Advanced computer simulations can precisely replicate critical performance parameters for weapons, allowing developers and innovators to analyze various designs and performance specifications much faster and more efficiently. Given the successful track record of digital engineering in various major weapons programs, it's reasonable to assume that such advancements have contributed to the Navy's progress and increased funding for its FAXX aircraft. It's also possible that demonstrators have already taken to the skies or are about to. The FAXX, designed to operate alongside and eventually replace the FA-18 Super Hornet, is set to push the boundaries of carrier-launched stealth aircraft. While many specific details might not be available, as mentioned, both industry and Pentagon weapon developers have been discussing a range of potential requirements, operational concepts, and technologies that are likely to influence the development of the Navy's sixth th generation fighter in recent years. One critical aspect of development centers around harnessing the potential of multiple drones, drone swarms, or other unmanned systems, all seamlessly integrated into the mix. The aim is to create a network powered by artificial intelligence, enabling these elements to communicate and collaborate effectively. These new generations of sensing and targeting, coupled with the ability to share real-time combat data, represent key components of this advanced approach. The Pentagon, Navy, and Air Force are making notable strides in advancing technology that allows manned stealth fighters to take control of multiple drones right from their cockpit. This innovation facilitates high-speed attack capabilities and enhances survivable forward reconnaissance. Imagine a scenario where a carrier-launched 6TT Gen fighter can command a fleet of drones from the cockpit, conducting missions such as testing enemy air defenses, conducting comprehensive surveillance, or launching attacks under human direction. 
Furthermore, this aircraft will likely incorporate cutting-edge stealth technology beyond traditional methods. It's expected to minimize heat signatures and radar returns significantly, possibly achieving near-elusive levels of stealth. The design might also incorporate smart skin sensors, seamlessly woven into the fuselage and various conformal structures, including built-in antennas. These advancements are poised to redefine the capabilities of next-generation aircraft. Notably, the success of digital engineering isn't limited to the Air Force's or Navy's 6 3-gen aircraft. It also played a crucial role in the on-time emergence of the Sentinel, the Air Force's new ICBM. The U.S. Air Force's LGM-35A Sentinel weapon system, previously known as the Ground-Based Strategic Deterrent, represents a crucial modernization effort for the ground-based component of the Strategic Nuclear Triad, which forms the foundation of U.S. national security. This system replaces the aging Minuteman III Intercontinental Ballistic Missile System, which has faithfully served for over half a century. The Sentinel system is a comprehensive overhaul of the existing capability. Its modular open system design not only reduces operational and maintenance expenses, but also provides remarkable system adaptability to remain effective in response to evolving threats. This marks a significant step forward in our national defense capabilities. Senior Air Force weapons developers highlight how digital simulations empowered engineers and analysts to evaluate eight or nine different intercontinental ballistic missile models before selecting the most promising ones for production. This approach was a game-changer, sparing the need to build ten different prototypes and significantly reducing the need for extensive physical testing to determine the best designs. Moving on, the former Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Jonathan Greenert, pointed out a few years back that the country that gains supremacy in the electromagnetic spectrum will likely come out on top in any conflict. This underlines the growing importance of controlling this aspect in modern warfare. The Navy's budget plans for 2024 prove their strong emphasis on achieving spectral dominance in connection with the 6th Gen FAXX Stealth Fighter Jet. Within this domain, technologies like lasers, electronic warfare weapons, and RF countermeasures are expected to play a significant role. Both Navy and Air Force budget documents elaborate on this, shedding light on the importance of these elements. In the Air Force's fiscal year 2024 budget request, there's a call for studies aimed at developing operational and system architectures, encompassing a family of systems and platforms that prioritize spectral dominance. This means they are focusing on the ability to control and manipulate the electromagnetic spectrum effectively. This involves tasks like jamming an enemy's guidance systems, impairing their targeting sensors, disrupting their communication networks, and interfering with radar systems. All crucial aspects of future warfare. The reason for this heightened focus on dominating the electromagnetic spectrum is the increasing reliance of networks and weapon systems on electronic components. For instance, a precision-guided weapon can't hit its target if its RF guidance is subjected to interference or jamming by electronic warfare systems. This shift in warfare strategy reflects the evolving nature of modern conflicts. This is why the F-A-18 Super Hornet has to be replaced. The F-18 Hornet was indeed a significant milestone in the United States military's aviation history, marking their first all-weather fighter and attack aircraft. This remarkable plane was designed to handle a wide range of missions, from traditional strike applications to air superiority, without compromising its fighter capabilities. Over time, it underwent steady improvements, but the current requirements have exceeded its capacities. In 1999, the F-A-18 Super Hornet was introduced into the U.S. Navy to replace the iconic F-14 Tomcat. The F-14 Tomcat had been a twin-engine, two-seat fighter aircraft serving in the U.S. Navy since the 1970s, primarily tasked with air superiority and fleet defense missions. The Super Hornet, the second upgrade of the F-A-18 Hornet model, proved to be highly capable and versatile, capable of taking on a wide spectrum of roles, from air superiority and fighter escort to reconnaissance, aerial refueling, air defense suppression, and precision strikes both day and night. Following its merger with McDonnell Douglas in 1997, Boeing manufactures the Super Hornet. This aircraft has two distinct versions, boasting a combined thrust of 44,000 pounds. 
To optimize engine airflow, the air inlets have been enlarged. With the afterburners engaged, it can achieve a maximum speed exceeding Mach 1.8. It takes off from the flight deck easily, outperforming the older legacy regarding landing performance. While both the Super Hornet and the Hornet share similarities, they have some subtle differences in their landing approaches. The Super Hornet employs an auto-throttle system that considers stick movement rate, whereas the Hornet focuses on distance. As a result, the Super Hornet lands at a speed approximately 10 knots slower than the Hornet, thanks to its larger lex and wings. Additionally, it has the capability to aerobrake by keeping the nose elevated after touchdown, and both aircraft are equipped with strong brakes for quick stopping. The Super Hornet's HUD, or head-up display, features a power carrot symbol for precise alignment during carrier landings. Although the boat landing experience in the Super Hornet is less abrupt than that of the Hornet, engaging full afterburner upon touchdown is prohibited. One notable improvement in the Super Hornet is its increased bringback capability. A pilot can land with more unreleased weapons thanks to its robust design and larger fuel tanks. In contrast, a heavily loaded Hornet may have limited fuel for landing attempts. The Super Hornet's greater fuel capacity allows for extensive loadouts and additional landing attempts during recovery. When it comes to range, the Super Hornet outperforms the Hornet. It offers a combat range of 1458 miles, surpassing the Hornet's performance. The Super Hornet can cover an even more substantial distance of 1898 miles for ferry missions with two AIM-9 missiles and the retention of three 480-gallon tanks. Regarding avionic systems, the Hornet relies on the Hughes APG-73 radar as its primary system, providing situational awareness, navigation assistance, and target tracking. It also features the ALR-67 radar warning receiver and the rover antenna for real-time data transmission. On the other hand, the Super Hornet incorporates state-of-the-art technologies, including advanced processors, fiber optics, conformal wideband antennas, and networking systems. These innovations enhance communication, electronic warfare, situational awareness, and payload transfer capabilities. L3. Harris has played a pivotal role in developing and implementing these technologies. The Super Hornet also includes advanced electronic warfare systems like the ALQ-214 Integrated Defensive Electronic Countermeasure System, providing robust self-protection against evolving electronic threats. The EA-18G Growler, an electronic warfare variant of the Super Hornet, utilizes the ALQ-99, the Navy's principal standoff jammer, offering powerful electronic attack capabilities and complete spectrum dominance, supporting joint operations across various domains. The FA-18E variant of the Super Hornet had its first operational deployment with Strike Fighter Squadron 115, known as the Eagles, operating from the USS Abraham Lincoln on July 24, 2002. The inaugural combat action on November 6 of the same year when the squadron enforced a no-fly zone in Iraq. Subsequently, the FA-18EF played a role in Operation Iraqi Freedom in March 2003, affirming its capabilities and reliability as an aircraft. In addition to its external armament, the Super Hornet is equipped with an internal weapon that packs a significant punch, the GEM-61, a two-gatling-style gun. This hydraulic-driven six-barreled rotary action weapon utilizes electric firing to deliver devastating firepower at a selectable rate of 4,000 or 6,000 revolutions per minute. This makes it a crucial tool for close air support and air-to-air -air combat situations. However, tensions have risen between the U.S. and China in the Pacific. Intelligence agencies hinted that China's anti-ship weapons might be more accurate than previously thought with the ability to target vessels as far as a thousand miles away. China is even testing supersonic drones to scout and relay targeting data to anti-ship missiles too, using satellite intel and various sensors. If China can't precisely target carriers at a thousand mile range today, they are undoubtedly working on a robust kill chain for their long range anti-ship weapons. This means the Navy must plan to keep its carriers at least a thousand miles away from Chinese shores in any potential conflict. But this poses a significant problem for the carrier's offensive capabilities. The current FA-18 Super Hornets have a combat radius of about 500 miles while carrying a full weapons payload. 
so they can take off, engage a target within 500 miles, and return to the carrier. The Block 3 Super Hornet, designed with additional fuel tanks, would have extended the range to around 650 miles. The F-35C, another carrier-based aircraft, boasts a combat radius of approximately 670 miles, falling short of the 1,000-mile range within China's area denial bubble. The Air Force's strategic bombers, B-2 Spirits, and forthcoming B-21 Raiders can potentially reduce the effectiveness of China's anti-ship systems by targeting them ahead of a carrier strike group. However, they don't fundamentally solve the Navy's range problem. This brings us to the fa XX program we discussed, the Navy's ambitious effort to develop a fighter to keep carriers at least a thousand miles away from Chinese shores. So, the Block II Super Hornet may have become the backbone of the Navy's carrier air wing since 2001, but that's about to change. The Navy's new fa XX program would significantly increase operational range over the FA-18 Super Hornet it's meant to replace and the F-35C Joint Strike Fighter it'll operate alongside. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you'll enjoy this other one whose link you can see on your screen too. So click on the link and check it out. See you on the other side.